Hello there. In this video, we are going to talk about authorization with .NET Core and ABP. This is the part three of the ABP series, which I'm doing. ABP comes with two types of um, authorizations. One is role-based and another one is permission-based. So um, if you run the application, you will see both. Uh, so this is the to-do application we are building. So when you run these applications, it you okay when you log in. I will put my. So you have roles and the roles have permissions. So we have uh, identity management, role management, user management, feature management. So we are going to create our own permission and find out how to um, apply these permissions to a API request. So we already, if you look at it, we already built a to do API service. So now when you try it out, see so you get a to do. So we will try to protect this to do's with permissions so that only the people who has the permission should be able to access the to do's. Let's get started. Okay. So now we the permissions the first step to add a permission is to come to the contracts and then to do permissions so this to do um, permission is the file where the permissions are, are um, defined um, permissions are mentioned mentioned as constants and then to do permission definition provider is where you define the permission first we will check out these to do permissions and then we go and define the permissions in the to do definition provider uh, okay so here they already have a um, um, permission set for us I will follow my blog post here. Uh, I already wrote a blog post uh, regarding the authorization. So there is a create permission. So you can copy and then put the to do's permission here. So we have a group name called to do's and then we are creating a new permission called to do. So th that would be the default permission. The default is um to just view or access so that is then create update and delete once we defined we can once we created the permission we can define so to define the permission you have to go to the permission definition provider i will add the link to this blog post in the description of the video uh, so you go to the permission definition provider the permission definition provider you define the permission so uh, you don't need it it's already there okay perfect so we have our uh, permissions defined and now we can protect the uh, endpoint of the to do. So, to protect the endpoint, you just add the permission as authorize. So, you can come here, put authorize, you just import the uh, authorization and also import uh, permissions. Now, here, how we applied uh, the permissions just using authorization and let's check out what we did here 
So, okay. So what I did here is this is the name permissions default. So with that default permission, I created the permission. And then once the permission is created, the default permission is added with multiple child permissions. So what this does is that if you want to create a create, if you add, if you add a create permission, that means the default is given. So this is one level above. So one no, the create is one level below. So this is creating a hierarchy uh, to the permissions. Um, so this is the main permission, then and then we are adding child using the add child method. You can create any number of permissions. Um, like this there's no limit in the free version of ABP and once the definition provider is added you the the permission sh should show up so when you run the app Okay, so we go to authorization, roles, user, permissions. See, there is to do's permission showing up already. So you can select all. There is a proper hierarchy maintained. So if I cannot, if I create, if I click create, the uh, default is automatically enabled. And then I can enable or disable and then save permission. Perfect. Now I have a uh, permission uh, default and create enabled. Uh, first, I will just um, remove the create because we didn't assign or give any API, uh, any permission to the create. Okay. Now um, I will go back. Or first, I will remove the permission just to test if it is throwing error. Okay, so we go back to Swagger. So this is the API, right? So if you go to slash API slash to do's, you will be redirected saying access denied. Perfect. If you just try to use perfect 404 undocumented perfect now let's go back and give the permission Okay, now we have the permission. Now let's go to API slash to do's. Now we have the to do's coming back. So it's uh, pretty straightforward to implement because all the infrastructure was readily available for you. All you have to do is define them and start using them in your applications without. Um, with very minimal code. You can actually start adding permissions to all the endpoints. Update and delete. So now we just given permission to almost all the endpoints we created. So only the people who uh, were assigned permission can actually access this um, endpoints. 
So, but now we used authorize to check the permission, but if you want to check it inside, you need to you need to inject i authorization service. So, let's do that in the repository and or since we are since we are using to do app service i think to do app service already has uh, the application service already has the authorization service yes see so we already have authorization service injected inside our uh, application service and application service inherits to do ser to do app service inherits from application service that means we can just go and do do this so instead of um Instead of checking for default, I will check for create. And if if um, this does not uh, succeed, we will perform else throw on authorized access exception. Yes, perfect. Oh, new one authorized exception. Perfect. Uh, so what we are doing here is we are checking if the authorization service is coming as result uh, as success. If it is success, we are returning the task. Otherwise, we are throwing an exception saying, "Hey, you don't have authorize authorization to do this." Um, there is another way to do this: is to check. Just, just check. Like um, instead of. Uh, doing authorize you can do this like so basically uh, the check is a task and it just checks whether this policy of like permissions that to do start uh, delete is available or not and um, yeah so it's part, part of this um, authorize actions extension you also have another is granted Mm, which will check if this um, which will return a bool if the if the authorization is available is given or not for the current context or current user yeah so these are a few other ways where um, few other ways on how you can use authorization in ABP framework for more information, I would recommend you to just uh, go through this um, authorization um, documentation from ABP Framework. Um, they have a pretty extensive um, documentation explaining almost all the possible scenarios um, where you, you need to uh, you need to modify the authorizations according to your need. There is also one where you can add a require feature. We will check out the feature in the next few videos. Um, so it will uh, require whether the given feature is enabled or not. One, then only you can assign this permission. So this will require a global feature to be enabled so that uh, otherwise the given permission will not be applied. And um, you can also um, we checked out this and then um, you can actually check out the permission value provider and you can also create your own claims principle factory based on the permissions. 
yes um yeah that's uh, pretty much it for this video um see you on the next video bye bye